Okay, last week we talked about the anatomy of the sciatic nerve. This week we're going to lead on to the anatomy of foot drop. Foot drop describes the difficulty or inability or weakness in bringing your toes towards your shin or dorsiflexion. It's a sciatic nerve injury, but which part of the sciatic nerve, which muscles are involved, what other issues can be caused, how does this affect the gait? That's the anatomy that we'll look at. Last week, we saw the sciatic nerve popping out here. We said it innervates the posterior thigh and everything distal to the knee. There it is there, that's kind of a skinny one. And we saw that the sciatic nerve in the posterior thigh at some point splits into the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve. It's the common fibular nerve that wends its way laterally around the head of the fibula, that bony bit that you can palpate here. And the common fibular nerve is going to give off two divisions that innervate the muscles of the lateral compartment and the anterior compartment of the leg. The leg anatomically being the bit between the knee and the ankle. And yes, builders. The common fibular nerve is also known as the common peroneal nerve with an O in the middle. I like to use fibula, it sounds clearer. Um, the common fibular nerve divides into two branches. The deep fibular nerve runs to the anterior compartment of the leg, that is these muscles here, and the superficial branch, the superficial fibular nerve, runs to the lateral compartment, that is to these muscles here. Aha! Now we're starting to see what's going on. It's these muscles in your shin, in the anterior compartment. When these contract, they bring the toes towards the shin and cause dorsiflexion. So these muscles are innervated by the deep fibular nerve but more importantly they're innervated by the common fibular nerve and is this guy that's most likely to be damaged by trauma because it's superficial see how superficial it is here running around before it dives deeply again here so it can be damaged directly through trauma um, I've heard of cases of people coming off motorbikes and sliding um, across the ground um, without wearing leathers and protective gear and just grazing away the skin, the bone, the nerve. Um, also a dislocation of, an, of the knee, a fracture of the fibula because it wends its way around the neck of the fibula could lead to stretching of the common fibular nerve and damage to it and that sort of thing. So it's prone to damage because it's a superficial nerve, but also just as being part of the sciatic nerve, it can be injured in other ways. Centrally, the central, ner central nervous system pathologies and diseases could affect this nerve, could affect these muscles. Or we saw the sciatic nerve comes from the low back. Low back pathology can damage this nerve and so on and so on. So there can be many causes, but what happens then? Well, these muscles here in the anterior compartment of the leg innervated by the common fibular nerve but actually by its deep fibular nerve branch. These are tibialis anterior, um, extensor digitorum, we're talking about the toes longus, extensor hallucis longus running to the big toe and there's fibularis tertius in there as well. But you can, can you imagine how these muscles sending their tendons to the toes, if these muscles contract they're going to pull the toes towards the shin, they're going to dorsiflex. More than that, the deep fibular nerve continues into the dorsum of the foot, this being the dorsum, this being the plantar surface. So in fact, the small, nerve, the small muscles inside the foot, the intrinsic muscles of the foot, that is on this surface, extensor digitorum brevis, brevis meaning short, so the short versions of the long guys up here, and extensor hallucis brevis will also lose their innervation. So if these muscles of the anterior compartment and the dorsum of the foot lose their innervation, they will become weak. Um, they will maybe become, uh, you'll be unable to contract these muscles, they'll be paralyzed. And the thing about muscles and joints is that we have muscles 
on both sides and they work with and against each other. So if we're thinking about dorsiflexion of the foot, these would be the agonists. They would be the ones causing the action. And these would be the antagonists. The muscles of the calf are largely involved in plantar flexion, pushing, you know, pointing your toes so you can raise yourself up, you can stand on your toes. Now, if you lose the innovation to these muscles, because most of the time all of these muscles have got tone, they're exerting some force against each other. If these muscles lose their innovation, these muscles will contract, even with minimal tone, unopposed against these guys, and start to point the toes when, when rested. So the problem here isn't just that these muscles are paralyzed and it's harder, or they're weakened, so it's harder to lift your toes up. It means that these muscles are actually pulling your toes down. So the effective length of the leg at rest is, is longer than it normally would be because these guys with a little bit of tone are pointing your toes. Does that make sense? So it's not just you can't do that. It means that your foot is kind of more doing that. What does this mean for gait and walking? Normally when we walk, normally when we walk and we swing the leg through, we lift the toes up during the swing phase to get them out of the way so that we can swing the foot through easily. I'm exaggerating here, but you get my point. We swing, lift the toes up and then plant and the toes come down. Ba -bum, ba -bum. So we, we lift the toes up, swing through. So if if these muscles can't do their job and the foot is longer, when you try to swing your foot through, the toes will drag, won't they? So we'll have this, this problem. But also because you're, after the swing phase, you're planting your foot down, you can't do that anymore because you're not slowly lowering you're not slowly lowering your toes down again in a controlled manner. They're just gonna slap. So you get this dragging, scuffing the toes, and then a, I can't even do it because I'm using my muscles instinctively, but <laughs> you get this uh, toe dragging, and then the foot kind of slaps down. Because walking is this repetitive action, we do it over and over and over and over again. And because we've mucked up the gait, is likely to lead to more problems, overuse, the slapping of the foot, damaging all sorts of things, right? And also, um, if it's the common fibular nerve that's been injured, it means that the lateral compartment muscles won't be working very well either. And these are involved in eversion, so pulling the foot that away. Tibialis anterior is involved in inversion. So basically, the inversion and eversion of the foot and balancing ourselves upon the foot will not be as effective either. So there will be a number of problems. But what people tend to do to counter this is because it, the toe is dropping and it's harder to bring through, you flex the hip more and then you can swing the foot through, which gives this, this high steppage gait. So you get this, this only happens on one side, you get this high, high steppage gait. So the hip flexes more than it normally would, which creates more work and changes the gait and changes other things. The other thing you can do is trying to bring that foot through. If this side is longer, is you can lean to the opposite side to bring the hip up and then swing that foot through. Um, what's the other one? Oh yeah, otherwise you can actually swing the foot out. So a, a high steppage gait, a trunk leaning gait or a abduction swinging gait. So that is foot drop. It's an inability, a weakness or a difficulty in dorsiflexing, lifting the toes towards the shin. It's therefore a problem with the muscles that would normally do that, but it tends to have a neurological, a nerve cause and it can be caused by damage to the common fibular nerve because it's quite superficial in the lateral leg. Um, but it could be a more central cause. It could be the sciatic nerve that has been injured. It could be the roots of the sciatic nerve in the lower back, or it might be even a more central neuropathological cause. So how do we treat it? Well, um, it depends. 
if um, you know it's possible to brace the foot so the toes are in like a neutral position and overcome the agonistic actions of the muscles of the calf um, in some cases um, muscle exercise or neuromuscular exercise therapies can help with this but most of the time if you have a patient with foot drop you have to think what is causing the foot drop so you're not fixing the foot drop itself you're going back to the cause of the foot drop and fixing that if possible okay foot drop the anatomy of that's it right uh i think i think it's time for me to get my almost annual haircut i'm going to take a couple of weeks off and i'll see you in the autumn term <laughs> <laughs>